It's that time, weather for weather geeks time here on Wednesday evening. Hope you had a good day, everyone. It was another pretty nice day weather-wise today. We've had a few pretty comfortable days in a row. Now we're going to start to crank up the humidity some for the end of the week, and we've got some heat that we'll be cranking up as we head deeper into the holiday weekend and into next week. Wanted to start out this evening with kind of an interesting topic. If you remember last spring, it was very quiet for the first part of severe weather season in our region. Uh, the Cleveland National Weather Service office had not issued a single severe thunderstorm warning for any of their counties at this point in the spring last year. Now the Pittsburgh office did have a little bit more, including a, a couple of tornado warnings in, in Lawrence County uh, last spring, but overall it was just a very quiet first part of spring when it comes to severe weather. Now we made up some ground later in the spring and into the summer and even into the early fall. Now compare this map, which shows last year's tornado warnings and severe thunderstorm warnings through today's date to the same map this year. It's been a much more active year. Now this is much more typical. This is not an unusual amount of severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings for our region uh, through today's date, but it's a pretty stark contrast to last year. Kind of interesting to look at our, our TV viewing area here. In fact, I'll zoom in a little bit. And in our viewing area, we've had a couple of severe thunderstorm warning polygons in southern Columbiana County. Mercer County has been a hot spot. Nearly all of Mercer County has been under a severe thunderstorm warning at some point so far this spring. But in Trumbull, the warnings have just been in the far north. We've had no severe thunderstorm warnings yet uh, this uh, spring season in Mahoning and Lawrence County. So kind of the middle of our viewing area has been particularly quiet. Not so quiet this evening off to our south and west. Some thunderstorms are rumbling through southwest Ohio. We actually had a couple of tornado warnings near Chicago earlier on. Also a few gusty storms down in parts of the deep south this evening. Uh, dew points are on the rise just to our west. Now we're still in the relatively comfortable 50s here locally, but look at Columbus. Dew point 66 and a tropical 73 is the dew point uh, down in Cincinnati, Ohio. And some of this more moisture-laden air is definitely going to come in tomorrow. I don't think we'll see a dew point of 73 around here, but we'll see dew points trying to get into the 60s for our Thursday. That will help fuel the potential for thunderstorms. Now, we are expecting a pretty active afternoon off to our south and west tomorrow. Our risk will go up towards evening. So this is tomorrow's kind of day two severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. Once again, you'll hear me say this a lot at this time of the year. If you think of our severe weather threat scale as a one to five scale, we have never been under a level five around here. A level four is pretty rare, maybe once a year. Um, we tend to see a lot of low risk severe weather days, ones and twos, a few threes per year. Tomorrow, uh, a lot of Ohio is in that slight risk or two on that one to five scale uh, for severe weather. And for us, the risk will start to go up, I think, as we head towards evening. We'll see a couple of, of clusters of storms in Kentucky, Southern Ohio, Western Ohio, then trying to push north and east towards the end of the day. Now, the big question for us is how much, if anything, uh, or how much, should I say, how much, if any, weakening will there be as we head towards evening? We're going to get out of the best time of the day for the best heating of the day, that sort of thing. But I still think these have the potential to still kind of pack a punch, uh, particularly, say, between 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, wind damage, still the number one concern. The risks overall, kind of similar to what we had on Saturday. I'm not saying it'll unfold just like we had on Saturday. Uh, in fact, things will be coming from a different direction this time around. Instead of kind of northwest to southeast, it'll be more like southwest to northeast. Uh, but the risks are about the same. Uh, we put the same weighting on them as we did on Saturday. Wind damage, the number one concern. Flash flooding, a secondary concern because these will be pretty efficient rain producers, even though they'll be moving at a pretty good clip. And, well, I think the tornado risk is very, very low. I'm not real impressed with uh, the ingredients for tornadic activity around here. It's a, still a non-zero chance. So anytime we have a non-zero tornado risk, we definitely want to mention it. I want to talk about uh, the, the flooding risk briefly. Again, these things will be moving pretty quickly, but while they're here, they can be efficient rain producers. And even into tomorrow night, even though the severe weather, the damaging wind risk will go down quickly towards midnight and after, um, there can still be some tropical showers around at times tomorrow night, even in two parts of Friday. So we have a low end flash flood risk for tomorrow, tomorrow night. By Friday, that risk will shift off to the east primarily. Now, when you look at our model output here, these numbers don't really break the bank, right? We're probably looking at an average of a half an inch to an inch. Now that's a 
probably just a region-wide average. There can be a lot of variance in this. If you get a couple of tropical downpours, even just one tropical downpour, you might get a half an inch of rain in you know 10 or 15 minutes um, in kind of the most extreme scenario. So I think there's going to be a wide variation in our rainfall totals, but a region-wide average of a half an inch to an inch or so seems like a pretty good bet. All right, so again, the timing. I think during the daylight hours tomorrow, a lot of dry time. Might be a stray shower in the morning with our warm front pushing through. I can't rule out an afternoon shower or storm. Keep that in mind if you're going to be playing golf tomorrow or working outdoors or anything like that in the afternoon. Most of the time will be will be dry, but I can't rule out a passing shower or storm. But the risk is definitely going to go up as we head towards evening. This is just one model depiction, and it might be a little bit fast. Uh, honestly, you know, with the the arrival, these more these could be more like nine ten o'clock instead of like eight o'clock, but. We'll have a better sense of that uh, by tomorrow morning, but this is uh, one run of this model showing a pretty active couple of hours mid-evening, right around sunset. And again, so a few showers can linger overnight. Friday, kind of an interesting day. I think there'll be some sun. We'll be underneath an upper level low, and there'll be some dry air that gets ingested into that, and I, I think there'll be some dry intervals for sure on Friday. But there can also be a shower occasionally, and especially as we get into the late afternoon and evening, maybe even a heavier thunderstorm. I don't think the chance is all that high at this point, but maybe we get a even a small hail-producing storm in a few spots towards the end of the afternoon and early in the evening on Friday. And maybe, maybe one or two more showers can linger into Saturday morning, but once we lose this stuff, all systems go for a fantastic holiday weekend coming up, especially if you like it on the warm side. This will be great pool weather, uh, particularly Sunday and Monday. Saturday, not that warm, 72, but a nice afternoon. And then 80 on Sunday, just a beautiful day. Humidity, kind of a non-story Sunday. A little bit more humid by Monday, but still not 70 degree dew points or anything like that. Dew points will probably mix down to the upper 50s in the afternoon. Uh, daytime temperatures, uh, mid 80s. We don't have a 90 in the forecast for Memorial Day, but the two days after Memorial Day, Tuesday and Wednesday, I think we've got a pretty good chance of seeing 89 or 90 degrees. Uh, the last day of school for many districts will be next week. Some districts... You know, especially the seniors are already done. Um, some uh, will have uh, some classes into the following week, but some are out next week, and the school the school year is going to end on a hot note for those who are wrapping up the year next week. All right, we'll have more updates on the severe weather threat over the next 24 hours. We may not do weather for Weather Geeks on Thursday, depending on how things transpire on the radar. If we do have severe weather threat, we'll do a live stream, Facebook and YouTube. I'll link to it on Twitter. And uh, in the event we ever have a tornado warning, you know the drill. Um, we interrupt programming on the television side if that's the uh, case. That sometimes results in unpleasant mail to us, but hey, that's that's what we're required to do. That's what we'll always do. So again, I'm not expecting a big tornado day or anything like that tomorrow, but uh, we can't rule it out at this point. So again, we'll keep you updated on all the platforms I just mentioned, as well as the Storm Tracker 21 app.